focus on how the process of breathing feels in your body. When you breathe in, where do you feel it? When you breathe out, where do you feel it? And as I've said many times, it's not just the feeling of the air coming in and out through the nose. There's a feeling of subtle movement in the body. In fact, there are many layers of subtle movement in the body that get progressively more and more subtle as you pursue them and as the mind gets quieter and you can sense these things. That counts as breath as well. In fact, it's the movement that allows the air to come in and out and allows you to sense the body, that allows you to move the body. Try to get in touch with that, and you'll find that you feel it in places that you might not have noticed it before. If you don't feel it, well, focus on the areas where you do have a sensation of movement, and allow that movement to be as comfortable as you can make it. How comfortable is that? It's up to you how sensitive you want to be to these movements. Part of this depends on just allowing yourself to think in these ways. It's an aspect of your awareness of your body that you may have learned very long time ago to ignore. So the first order of business is to allow yourself to perceive it that there is an energy flowing through your blood vessels. There's an energy flowing in the nerves, in the muscles. Just outside the skin, there are many levels of energy here. The more you can make your mind quiet, the more you see the subtle ones. It's like trying to listen to a sound that's far away. You have to make yourself very, very quiet so you can hear it. You also notice that the more subtle your attention, the more subtle your awareness, the more the sense of well-being that comes from the breath, or the pleasure that comes from the breath, can seep into areas that used to be hardened inside. The fact that we've ignored this part of our awareness for so long allows us to treat it pretty poorly. So now that you open up to it, you begin to realize so you've been harsh in the way you breathe or harsh in the way you force energy through the body. Often when we repress or a thought or put in a denial, there's going to be a physical side to that repression as well. And over time these things begin to build up. Those parts of the body have learned not to trust you, so it's going to be a while before they open up. So you've got to treat them gently and show some gentleness in the way you deal with the breath energies that you are aware of, that can move, that can have a sense of flow inside the body. And when you treat them with gentleness and the parts of the body that are connected with old buried thoughts will start beginning to trust you, and they may begin opening up. In Thai, the word bhatibhat has two meanings. One, you practice. That's what one meaning of bhatibhat is. You practice the Dharma. You practice any kind of skill that you're going to work on. The other one is when you look after somebody. Bhatibhat Krubhajan or Bhatibhat Puyai, Bhatibhat Palme. What it means is that you're looking after your teacher, you're looking after your elders, you're looking after your parents. And the Johns will often make the comment that when we practice the Dharma, we're also practicing ourselves. We're, in other words, we're looking after ourselves here. And the way the mind and the body relate goes through the breath energy. So this is a really good place to get to know how to look after yourself inside. Show some more sensitivity, show some more, more gentleness. Now the problem is, as you begin to get gentler and gentler with yourself, more sensitive to what's going on inside, you begin to notice energies of the people around you. 
Some of them are beneficial, a lot of them are not. So you have to be like a turtle. Turtles have very sensitive bodies, and so to protect those bodies they have very hard shells. In fact, one of the images in the canon of a practitioner is someone who's like a turtle, sees dangers, and so he pulls his head in, pulls his legs in. The fox tries to come and get the turtle, but the turtle knows the fox is there, so it just stays inside his shell. It doesn't come out. The fox eventually goes away. You need your shell as well. Now the shell here is not one that's going to totally blank out other people. As we were saying earlier, it's like those old commercials for Gardol. It's a clear plastic shell. You see what's going on. It doesn't block your vision, but it does block bad things from coming in. And the breath can do that. The more you get the breath energy to fill the body, the more you have a sense that your awareness fills the body, the less you can be invaded by other people's energies. This, too, is an important skill to develop, to protect yourself in this way. And you find that you're also protecting others. Because if you find their energy coming in, and you, you tend to lash back out at them. So this way people stay in their respective places. The old saying that good fences make good neighbors. Well, this is a good fence. So when you have it around you, you can be talking to people, and their words can come at you, and their energy can come at you, but you don't take it inside. To make another analogy, it's like you've been using a vacuum cleaner. Every little piece of dirt out there got sucked in, so you turn off the vacuum cleaner. Then you realize that their words really don't hit you. You've been sucking them in. As for their energies, you've been sucking those in as well, so that you fill the body with your awareness and fill the body with good breath energy. That's your protection. And you can see what they have to say. You can actually sense their energies going around you, which means you know what's going on and you can respond. You have to tell yourself you've got something good here inside that you want to maintain. And you don't want anything outside to knock you off balance. So you've got to have this sense of protection. There's another analogy in the canon of a man carrying a bowl of oil on his head. The bowl is filled to the brim with oil, and there's another man standing behind him with a raised sword, ready to cut off his head as soon as it, one drop of oil spills out of the bowl. So as the Buddha asked the monks, you know, would that man let himself get distracted outside? Because in addition to walking with a bowl of oil on his head, he's got walking through a stadium where there's a beauty queen singing and dancing on the stage, and there's a big crowd of people on the other side. He's walking between them. The beauty queen stands for all the attractive things in the world. The crowd stands for all the mind's normal reactions to those things. You've got to maintain your balance in between those. can't let yourself get distracted either way. In the same way, you have this sensitive area inside the body, and you want to keep it in balance. You want to keep it protected. Because as you do, your powers of mindfulness grow, your powers of concentration grow. Your discernment gets more and more sensitive. Discernment isn't just a matter of learning words and then applying them to what's going on. It's a matter of sensitivity. Noticing what you're doing, and sometimes what you're doing is very subtle and pre-verbal, dealing with the energy in the body. And it's been subconscious for so long that you haven't noticed it, but now you're going to bring it up into your awareness by making your awareness more subtle. That's the sensitivity that provides the basis for real discernment, the kind of discernment that sees things going on in the body and mind that have been going on all the time, but you haven't noticed them. You've been rushing past them. You've been stepping all over them. Now is the time to give them some protection.
Because that way you learn a lot of lessons about the body and the mind, and particularly about the mind that you can't learn in books. You can't learn from what other people tell you. You learn from your own sensitivity inside. 